Hi, I'm Bob Alsop with Shop Saber CNC. Around here, they call me Router Bob. In this video, we're going to explore machining the slots for pocket screws with a Shop Saber CNC router. Using pocket screws to attach two pieces of wood in woodworking has become very common. Most people use a jig and a drill or a standalone machine to do that, but VCAR Pro has a tool path that will allow us to actually incorporate that process into our machining, and that's what we're going to do in this video. The first step is to try to figure out what geometry is actually required. Well, here's what we know. The head on the pocket screw is just slightly under 3 eighths of an inch, so it makes sense to use a 3 eighths ball nose to do the slot. Okay, it comes in at a 15 degree angle, so we know that. Now, we've actually got a project to use this on. It, it involves Live Edge, and Live Edge requires we have a box for resin, and it has to be real strong, so we're gonna use these pocket screws for that. So that's gonna be our application. Our material's gonna be 3 quarters thick. We're probably going to put the side pieces down into a groove and eight deep. So we're gonna base all the geometry on that application. Now, let me show you how I did it. What we're looking at now is Rhino, and I'm using Rhino to create the drawings, and so this is basically how I under, undertook this project. First off, there's some things we know. For one thing, this is the base piece, and it's much bigger than this, and you can see there's a, this, there's a, a groove in here, Dado. This is the side piece that fits down in there. That's the eighth of an inch, and we put that in there to, to really locate where these pieces go. Now, this represents the 15 degree angle, that the screw needs to follow, and then this represents an eighth of an inch from the bottom. That's where I want the tip of the screw to end up so that it doesn't go all the way through. And then this represents the, the diameter of the tool when it's at depth, and it also up here when it comes out. So now, once you've seen that, and let me show you what I derived out of that. Okay, this is what I really needed. Now, here's our parts that we looked at. Okay, here's where the tool starts, so it comes up here. It's at the surface, and then it, it goes, uh, basically, it follows this line, and then, it, of course, it's, it's dropping down in depth. So that creates that slot. So it's zero at the top, and it's 3 eighths deep. And the numbers I need are what is this length, and how far is this from the edge? That's what I have to have for VCAR Pro to actually create those tool paths. So that's how I arrived at that. This actually represents the nest of the parts we're going to cut out for our box, but let's look specifically at the slots. So here's, let's, let's look at one of them. Here's the slot. Now this represents the length that we looked at. This represents how far it is from the edge, and then let's open up the fluting tool path and you'll see the rest. Okay, so I defined how deep I started at zero. If you remember, that went back to our drawing, and the final depth was uh, 0.375. Okay, I selected the 3 8 ball nose tool, so that's how it gets cut. All right, we're going to ramp over the complete length. It's going to be a linear ramp, and when we calculate that, that gives us a tool path. It's really that simple. Once you figure out those numbers, it's really simple, and it's, it, it's a great method. Now, let's go back and let's look at this whole sheet, and let's talk about what we're doing here. Okay, this is a 4 by 8 sheet of a 3 quarter inch uh, melamine board, and we use that because it's pretty stable and and uh, it, it'll be pretty flat. Now, this these two lines here represent dados, so we're going to cut slots in there, dados, an eighth of an inch deep, so that our pieces fit in there. And so, this cut right here, sep whoops, this cut right here separates this board, so this becomes the base piece. Okay, then I've got small pieces that are caps, and that's what these are. And the caps are used to cover the end. Now, I didn't put them down in, in grooves because our tabletop is so long, we're just going to cap it to the end of the material. But this is the pieces with the slots in them. And you see all the slots here. So what we're going to do in orders, we're going to actually cut these uh, dados, then we're going to separate this piece, then we're going to cut our slots, then we're going to go over here and... Uh, and actually cut the small pieces and then the, and the larger piece. So let's, let's look at that in simulation. So now this drill right here, you're not going to be able to hardly see it, but, I, but in those caps, I went, and put, went ahead and put one eighth inch holes in there to guide the screws where we screw those on. Okay, and then these are the pockets. That's these cuts here. Okay, here's the fluting. 
So that's all the tool pass to create those little slots that we created. Okay, then this is the first cut. So this separates this panel over here from the main sheet. So now this is separate. Okay, then we identify the small parts. That's these, and we do a, an, an onion skin cut first. And, and we're doing that because we want to make sure they don't move. So this first pass cuts through and leaves about 30 thousandths. Then we return back and we cut all the way through. Then we go back over here and we cut these parts out. Now let's look at the actual simulation on that. And when we're done, that's our parts. Here's our sheet of melamine on the table. Now let's watch the machine in action. As you can see, the machining of the screw pockets is really fast, so it makes sense to do this on the CNC, not as a secondary operation. Now it's time to assemble all the parts for our box. You can see how nicely these parts fit together. The side pieces really fit cleanly into those dados, and the pocket screws are a great way to attach these. Our final step then is to screw the caps on the ends. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Including pocket screws in your designs is a great way to make assembly quick, and including them in the CNC operations is absolutely the way to go. If you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have more questions, you can contact us at shopsaver.com. Thank you for watching.